Hey, Dallin here. Today I want to show you how to get a free time-lapse app for your Sony camera. I've got my A6500 here, but this should work for all cameras in the A6000 lineup and the A7 lineup. It was originally written for an A5100, so that's probably where it's going to work best, but I've had no problems on my A6500. Because this video is about my A6500, I'm obviously not filming on this, I'm filming on my cell phone. Hopefully the quality is alright. Okay, to install the app, you'll want to go to this website, sony-pmca.appspot.com. This is a site created by a user, MA1CO. He reverse engineered the Sony framework used for installing applications. So a huge shout out to him. In fact, we're going to go to his GitHub repository site. This is where he has the code if you want to help uh, contribute, if you want to do some programming. I'm looking into it and may do some stuff. Anyways, he has a lot of useful things here. Uh, that will help you if you run into any issues in the install process. A lot of this is more geared towards developers, so uh, it might go over the heads of some people, but it's very useful, especially if you're trying to troubleshoot. Anyways, we'll go back to the site where this framework is held, um, and we want to go into apps. We go into apps, and as I mentioned before, MA1CO, huge shout out for creating this framework, also for creating the Open Memories Tweak app, which allows you to uh, unlock video recording over 30 minutes and also do a region and language unlock on your cameras. Some of you may be familiar with that app. Today I want to talk about this Better Manual app by Obsidium. I think it might get overlooked because it's called Better Manual, but it actually has a time-lapse feature built into it that I really like. Um, we're going to click on here and this page is how you will install the app. Unfortunately, uh, due to some browser restrictions, it won't work in Chrome, so I have to open up Internet Explorer. If you're on Windows, Internet Explorer will do the trick. If you're on a Mac, Safari, I think, should work for you as well. Uh, anyway, so let's go back to that site in Internet Explorer. And it tells you exactly what you need to do. First, we'll turn on your camera and then connect it via USB. Make sure that when your camera is in USB mode that it's either in MTP or mass storage mode. And then if you want to verify, make sure that everything's hooked up okay, you can click Get Camera Info. And it will communicate with your camera and it will actually pull back some information. So it tells you your firmware, your battery, your serial number, total storage space, and free storage space. I doubt you'll ever fill this all the way up, but it's nice to know. It tells you what version of Android you're running. So some of the newer cameras, I have the A6500, are running a more recent version of Android than the older cameras like the A5100. However, it's still a pretty outdated version of Android. Um, and then it also tells you all of the apps you have installed on your camera. These are actually the package names of the Android apps that are installed. So you'll see that I already have this app installed, but we'll go through and install it again anyways. Um, and that's as simple as just clicking this install better manual. And the website will communicate with my camera, which is hooked up. And on my camera, you will see that it is installed. And that's all there is to it. Um, there might be a plugin that you need to install. I know I had to, but you might not need to install. If you do, it will prompt you and tell you exactly what you need to do. It's very simple to follow the instructions. Anyways, just to verify that we got it all installed, let me unplug my camera. And then I'm going to go into my apps list. And here you can see Better Manual. This isn't focusing very well. All right. That's all there is to it. So I can go in. And you can see this is what the Better Manual app looks like. It looks very similar to a normal view of your camera and it behaves very similarly. This is optimized for doing manual work. You can see the focus peaking. But what I want to talk about is the time lapse feature, which is this button right here. So using your control pad, or if you have a touch screen, you can actually go straight to it. But if you use the control pad, hit the down button, and you'll see that the selected items will go through. So when this is green, 
hit the center button, and it says to set time lapse, use the scroll wheel up top. So up top, you can change how long the interval is in between the shots. So let's do three seconds, and then we hit the center button to confirm. And then you can set a picture limit. Let's set the limit to nine. And it says it's going to start. And there you can see it take a picture. And then I'm going to move my hand around so you can see that it's actually taking different pictures. So very simple, very easy to use. Um, there are some minor annoyances for me, like not being able to see the live view when it's actually taking the pictures, but that's a pretty, pretty minor gripe. I think it does a great job and it, it's very simple to use, very, very straightforward. Another thing to note is because this is a manual uh, app, make sure you've got the focus set when you start your time lapse. To give you an example of what the time lapse looks like, here's one I did of my new 3D printer. This was my very first time using the printer, so I just set up my camera on the tripod and let it take pictures for the beginning part. It actually took longer to print than I expected, so that's why you only see a little bit. This time lapse is me 3D printing a back lens cover for my E-mount lenses. This lens cover is actually going to my brother. If you can think of any camera related gear that you'd like me to 3D print and test out, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.